They're possibly the most beautiful, certainly the most famous couple in the world. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, the star attraction at this year's Cannes Film Festival. They may be sharing the red carpet with a roll call of celebrities, but their only rival in the glamour stakes is Cannes itself. Cannes glorious, Cannes fantastic, Cannes, you know, this, this um, international depot of great films with this great lineage and, and, and really fun to, to be here with a, with a movie. How would you compare it to being at the Oscars, for instance? Well, I mean, it's not a, really an awards show. It's you get, to, you get to unveil something that, you know, by the time you get to the Oscars, it's been talked about to death and there's been like, you know, 18 award shows to get to there and, <laughs> and you're a bit weary. Um, this is just nice and refreshing and, a, you know, it's one of the great spots in the world and, and um, you get to show something, you get to unleash it. And the film Brad is unleashing tonight is Inglorious Bastards, the much-anticipated movie from a very exuberant Quentin Tarantino. He's hoping for second time lucky in this world-renowned film competition. The jury of film experts awarded Tarantino top prize, the Palm d'Or, for Pulp Fiction in 1994. It's the closest thing to like the cinematic Olympics that there is. I mean, it's a place where film really matters, where it's, it's it, if you've grown up knowing about the Cannes Film Festival, which I did at 12, then it really kind of, it's, it's Oz. <laughs> You know, if, if for a film director or even for a film enthusiast, for a film critic, it's like you're going down the yellow brick road to get to the Emerald City, and the Emerald City is Khan and the, the Grand Palais. You certainly looked a bit excited on the red carpet. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you've described the Palais as a holy place. Yeah. Oh, it's a great place to see a movie. It's, it's, it's a really special experience. The drama doesn't just happen in the cinema. The Croisette, the colourful beachside promenade, is a show in itself, a magnet for the world's biggest attention seekers. From the quirky to the quaint, from stilettos to stilts, from the beach to the mega boats. Film critic Jason Solomons has seen it all. Oh, I love the boat. Yeah. A columnist with Britain's Observer, this is his 12th film festival in Cannes. Can is a permanent circus, it's a bubble, it's a prism, it's all of cinematic life rolled up and hurled into one. It's the parties, it's the premieres, it's the art, it's the artifice, it's the brilliance, it's the stupidity, all in ten days. It is quite extraordinary, there's nothing else like it. People describe it as Fellini-esque, a parade of the kind of freaks and geeks of the world. And this year really is like that. Even in a credit crunch, it manages to, to kind of power through on the promise of God knows what. For all the chaos of Cannes, the hysteria, the photographers, the fuss, at its heart, this film festival is all about cinema. And in that sense, Cannes is a great equaliser. The biggest names and absolute wannabes can get equal billing. If your film is selected, it premieres here at the Palais and you get to walk the red carpet, the famous red stairs. And if the jury likes your film, you can go from complete unknown to superstar overnight. You guys come in nice and close. And that's what happened to unknown film director Warwick Thornton. All the way from Alice Springs, he and his young, shy stars Marissa Gibson and Rowan McNamara are about to become the toast of the town with their small budget film Samson and Delilah. To get into this place is, you know, incredibly special. It's, it's, it's very exclusive and, you know, you, you sit next to Quentin Tarantino and, and Francis Ford Coppola, you know, when, and that's, that's pretty amazing. And the audience is, is, is just absolutely this, you know, they live cinema. And to this discerning audience, Warwick is bringing his first feature film. Samson and Delilah is a story set in Central Australia, a confronting tale of love between two teenagers who only have each other. Being 
being selected to compete at Cannes is a big deal in itself. To walk the red carpet to face the jury's judgment is nerve-wracking. Warwick's competing for the Camera Door Prize, awarded to the best novice director. This place, it doesn't matter if you're Steven Spielberg. If they don't like your film, they'll eat you alive. If they like you, they'll hug you to death. And you don't have to be Steven Spielberg to be loved and recognised. Absolutely, you don't have to be. It's about good cinema and good storytelling, yeah. Yeah, which is very, very cool. And even if you're Quentin Tarantino, there are no guarantees. He's in competition with 20 other top directors for the gold medal of filmmaking, the Palm Door. And that, messieurs, what a Jew shares with a rat. So Palm Door or Oscar? What's better? Oh, uh, I, I'll take them both. <laughs> but, uh, and I have them both. Uh, but uh, I guess if I had to choose one or the other, I would choose the Palm Door. You probably heard we ain't in the prisoner taking business. In true Tarantino style, Inglorious Bastards is a mix of violence and comedy set in Nazi-occupied France in World War II. Without giving too much away, it's a precocious Jewish revenge film, shown here at Cannes for the first time, even before its stars have seen it. None of us have seen it. We're all going to see it tonight. So. It's a bit weird, sitting here talking about a film you haven't seen, that you That you know in, nothing about. That you know nothing about. Can I, we usually bluff our way through these can things anyways. Can I tell you anyways. one thing? What? You survive. Great, great. <laughs> now I hear that... Uh, I hear others die. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> we in the killing Nazi business. And cousin businesses are booming. <laughs> and what's it like to be part of a story that rewrites history? The ultimate get-back yeah, movie. Yeah, that's even, even history gets bastardised in this, in this film. <laughs> I'm rich and I'm dead sexy! Another surprise is the casting of comedian Mike Myers, who played Fat Bastard in Austin Powers. <laughs> But in Inglorious Bastards, he plays a British general. The Germans call them the Bastards. I got a call from Quentin, and he was like, you know, would you like to be a British general? Everybody, all my group of friends were like, what? That's the craziest... What? That's the craziest... Of course you want to do this. All you ever talk about is World War II and being a British general. I talk like a British general for my friends as a joke. If we're making plans, it'll be like, gentlemen, here's how I see it. Drinks first, then a steak dinner. All right, let's go. This way to the wall. You've been auditioning all your life. All my life. So, and then it's like, and Rod Taylor's going to be in it. I was like, out of town, no way. Tarantino's maybe, yeah, he's our greatest filmmaker. I mean, he's the most complete auteur there is. And all I had to do is micromanage one soul and get to wear the uniform, and it was unbelievable. And go to the party. How, how have you enjoyed the Cannes experience? Oh, I'm so shy. Those th that's the hard part. As red carpet royalty, the never shy Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie make it look so easy. Hard to believe there are six kids waiting for them at home. When you go away to promote a film like this, what do you tell the kids? Dad's gone away for work or do work. Dad's gone away yeah. for play? Yeah, no, Dad's got to go to work. And they get very angry. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Sure, they don't understand work. I mean, the older one, my, my boys do, my older boys, but yeah, they don't understand. It's just a thing that takes mommy and daddy away. What does Brad Pitt represent here in Cannes? Immensely handsome, very bright and very cool. Uh, and I think, you know, for Cannes to attach themselves to something like that, it kind of reflects itself through him. Uh, and he's a pretty good poster boy for this uh, festival. The stars and the starlets are put through nonsensical hoops. It's part of the selling process. During its 62-year history, the film festival has had many glamorous poster boys and girls from the golden years of Hollywood. Today, Cannes is still synonymous with superstar quality, but also celebrities desperate for the limelight. 
Well, and Cannes is in fact so important that every celebrity wants to attach themselves to it, kind of get a bit of rubbed off of that movie Stardust. And people like Paris Hilton, who God knows needs some Stardust, but she doesn't do anything. She just turns up and kind of attracts, the, like, like moths to a flame, the paparazzi. <laughs> Gatecrashers like Paris may come for the parties, but for most, Cannes is about the films. What does Cannes mean for the films that are featured here, for the films that win the Palme d'Or and the other competitions? Does it mean commercial success? Oscars definitely does, that's ka -ching. Yes, you can market that. Palme d'Or, not necessarily, but in a European scale, outside Hollywood, which is a market that's becoming increasingly important with every year that passes, yes, the Palme d'Or carries a lot of clout. After 10 long days of frivolity and the serious job of screening after screening, the festival jury didn't grant Tarantino gold this time. Beaten by another war film, a harrowing tale from Austria. The car gonna take off. But our own and Samson and Delilah charmed the judges and director Warwick Thornton took home the coveted prize, the camera door, and the prestige of conquering the world stage. I can look back on the rest of my life now and say I went to Cannes with my first feature film and, um, and got a standing ovation and, um, and have had these incredibly positive reviews, not, not only from Australia, but from the world. <laughs> For 10 days in May every year, the circus comes to Cannes. In the big top, centre stage, a passing parade of stars and their films. And ringside, celebrity worshippers and wannabes. For a short time, the spotlight is on Cannes and it's bedazzling and brilliant. But all too quickly, the lights go out. The saddest thing in all the world is can the Monday morning after the Sunday night of the awards when the billboards come down, the flags hang limply and dirtily in the mess, the scaffolding clangs as everything comes down. Basically, the circus is leaving town, the artifice is coming down, crumbling around our feet. And you know who comes in after the film conventions? The dentists come in. And that kind of puts it into perspective. Can during the dentist convention? I won't bother. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.